Hi there, everybody. Welcome to your December Monday night all levels class. Great to have you. I'm Matt, and uh, let me turn on some light here so we get a little bit of a. Uh, actually, see me. All right. Glad to have you. So we have a four week class here in December and we are gonna be doing um, waltz for the next four weeks, which I'm really excited about. I feel like waltz is a great holiday dance. The music is a little slower, it's a little more elegant and I'm uh, looking forward to getting into this dance with you as we go through the next four weeks. All right, so today uh, is week number one and we're gonna go through three of the sort of core steps in waltz and then we'll be building on that as we go from week to week. So if you happen to miss a week, we always review all of the patterns before we add anything new, all right? So we have four weeks, we're gonna add patterns for weeks one, two, and three, and then we'll spend week number four just going through all the patterns and dancing them with music, which I'm looking forward to as well. And we'll do lots of music as we go through the weeks. So the first thing I always like to do, if you are new to my class, is I always like to get our bodies kind of warmed up and moving around a little bit. So we're gonna put on a song and get our bodies uh, activated. I usually like to put on the dance that we're actually doing this month. So here we go. All right. So, like we've talked about, very elegant, very graceful. That's the feeling of waltz. So let's just start with a little bit of what we call box step, because that's the basic for our waltz. So we go forward, side, and together. Back, side, and together. Forward, and together. Just get your legs moving. We don't have to do anything big or extreme with our legs right now. We don't even need to do rise and fall. Just get your legs working underneath you. We always want to feel that our legs swing from our hip. So feel that you're letting your hip joints be as free as possible. So don't try and be too much in control of the step. Just let your legs swing naturally underneath your body. Good. Now as you feel comfortable, try and increase the size of the step. This is a traveling dance. So it's designed to move around the room. We'll get into that more today. But I just want you to get used to your legs really using their full capacity, their full length. Let's just go side to side for a second. Just feel that swaying side to side action. And if you can go to the side into your knees, that's even better. Feel yourself into those quads. And then drawing up as you collect. Side collect, side and collect. Let's try that forward and back. Forward and back. Forward and back. Let's try that with the other foot. Good. Let's do our squats. I always like to do this during our warm-up dance. These are the glute activators, the hamstring activators, the quads. Get those big muscle groups warmed up. Here we go. Right, that's five, five more. Try 
水果吗？ Good job. Shake your legs out. Think side to side again. All right. Let's do our box again. In one, two, three. Nice big steps. Beautiful. Great job, everybody. Good warm up. Okay. So now that we've got our body warmed up, I always feel like. Even though we're not necessarily doing practical steps, it's just so good to kind of feel the blood flow into your legs. I think a lot of times the reason we love to dance is because it activates our body, and we actually get to listen to beautiful music at the same time. It's really a gift that we get to do this dancing thing as a hobby. So I'm really glad you're joining me tonight. We're going to start first of all, just making sure that we're all on the same page with just some basic actions. So we've already done that pretty much during the warm up. The waltz is what we call a three-quarter time dance, which means that we take three beats to each measure, and then there's four measures to each phrase. Now we're not going to get into phrasing very much, so you don't have to worry about the four part of the waltz. But the three is very important. The three is the number of beats to each measure, and we take two measures for each one box. All right. So the way that we count that is we would do a walk. A side and a close. That's one measure, and then a walk, a side, and a close, and that's our second measure. We could count it this way: one, two, three, two, two, three, and again: one, two, three, and two, two, three. All right. Now, if I do the leaders part, leaders, you're always going to start with the left foot, and you're going to take a forward step. So you're going to step straight forward with the left. Side with the right, and then collect the left to the right. The trickiest part about the waltz box is remembering to change your weight. So now we go back with the right foot if you're the leader, back and side and together again change the weight. Start over again with the left foot. One, two, three, and one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So that's our waltz box as the leader. If you're the follower, you're going to start with the right foot first. You're going to start backwards because the leader is coming towards you. So backwards on your right foot,、uh, back, side together and forward, side together. Right, two, three, and left, two, three. Right, two, three, and left, two, three. So that's our regular box for the leader and for the follower. A couple of things to keep in mind: as this is a what we call a smooth dance, smooth dances are dances that travel around the room. That's the the biggest characteristic of of the smooth dances. Smooth dances, because they are traveling dances,、uh, require heel leads whenever you go forward. Now, that's not a universal rule, as we'll talk about in waltz as we go along. But the big thing that I want you to think about is that there's two rules to know if you're supposed to do a heel lead in waltz. The first rule is you're going forward. If you're going forward. That's important. You can't do a heel lead if you're not going forward. So any side step, I never ever ever want to see that when I go to the side. That action is unnatural from a smooth dancing action. All right. So we always want to go to the side with our toes. Okay. And equally, if we go backwards, I'm never going to go backwards with the heel. You got to have pretty flexible Achilles and calves to be able to do a heel lead going backward. All right, so backward step should always be in tow. But if you're stepping forward, there's a chance it's a heel. The second requirement to do a heel lead in waltz is that it is a one. So it's a heel lead if you step forward, and it is on beat number one. So we already talked about one, two, three, one, two, three. So if I'm the leader, beat number one is my first step, and it's a forward step. So it's a heel lead. So I would do a heel on the forward step. Beat number two is a side step, so that's a toe. Beat number three is a side step, so that's a toe as well. The next step is a one. That's a beat number one, but it's a backward step, so it's a toe. Sideways step. That's a toe. Collect my feet. That's a toe as well. So the only heel lead 
as the leader, is my forward step at the beginning of the box. So I would say heel, toe, 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 toe. All right? Now I can get more exact on that as far as toe heels and all that jazz, but I just want you to be thinking about which part of the foot you're starting with. If you're the follower, your first step is a backward step. So it's a one, but it's a backward step. So it would be a toe. So that would go toe. Side step is a toe. Like collecting, that's a toe. Now the next step is a forward step. That's a one again, and it's a forward step. So that's a heel. And side is a toe, together is a toe. All right? So again, followers, it's your fourth step. But again, it's on beat number one, and it's a forward step. So that's a heel lead. All right? So again, we go toe, 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 toe heel, toe, toe. Great. All right, so those are the big things I wanted to talk about. Rise and fall, I'll probably get into a little bit later in the month. Today, I just want to kind of get us moving through waltz as comfortably as possible. The first step we're going to do today is called a box step with an underarm turn. This is a really fantastic step. It's one of the first steps that everybody learns when they start dancing the waltz. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Leaders, you're going to start with a regular box step. You're going to go forward, side, together, back, side, together. Then you're going to start another box. You're going to go one, two, three. Now on your backward step, which is your right foot, you're going to raise your left hand. For the next six steps, that left hand is going to be up in the air, but your box step is going to stay the same. So you're going to step back, side, together, forward, side, together. At this point, your partner will have finished their turn. You can bring your hand back to normal height, You'll finish the last half of your box backwards on the right foot, back, side, together. And that's the box step with an underarm turn for the leader. Let's do that again. This time we're going to do it with a dance hold, all right? Now, a couple things to think about with a ballroom hold for waltz. Waltz, foxtrot, Viennese waltz, tango's a little different, so we'll talk about that some other time. Waltz, foxtrot, Viennese waltz, we have what we call a wide ballroom hold. Okay, Latin dances tend to be a little more compact. The ballroom hold is nice and wide. So I always like to think that from elbow to elbow, I am stretched out as much as I can. However, if my partner is smaller than I am, I don't want to be so wide that my partner can't reach out and they're doing this to be in contact with me. So I make my frame as wide as they are capable of adjusting without feeling like we're collapsed or, or, or crunched into each other. So nice and wide, feel like your elbows are as uh, wide as they can be from point to point. So here we go. Let's do the first box. And one, two, three, one, two, three. Here's our second box. One, two, three. Now as I step backwards, I'm going to raise my left hand. My right hand is going to go open so that I give my partner plenty of space. I'm going to step backwards, and now I'm going to do my box step, the second half of this box, and the first half of my next box without changing anything with my arms. One, two, three, four, five. My partner's back to me by step number six. We complete my box back, side, together, and we carry on from there. So my box step with an underarm turn, I always like to do a full box first. So the total number of boxes that I'll do is three. One box before we start anything, one box, uh, sorry, half a box, uh, then I leave the underarm turn, that takes a total of six steps, then I complete my third box with a backside together, okay? Let's do that one more time for the leader just to make sure that is clear. Here we go. And full box step, no change in frame. One, two, three, one, two, three. Second box, just do the first three steps. One, two, three. I raise my hand as I step backwards. I open my right arm. I raise my hand. One, two, three. I do the first half of my third box. One, two, three. My partner is back to me. I put my hand on their back. I bring my left hand down. Now I complete my third box with a back side together. All right? Great. Let's do that now as the follower. So followers, a lot of dances, we just essentially do the natural opposite of what the leader does. <laughs> Waltz, right off the bat, we're going to do something completely different because you get to do your turn. All right? So here's what we do. We're going to start off with a regular box step. I'm going to go 
One, two, three. One, two, three. Now I'm gonna do my second box. One, two, three. Now my partner raises their hand as they step backwards. That's as I'm stepping forward. So as I step forward on my left foot, they raise their hand. That is now my first step in six steps in a circle. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. To do that, I'm gonna grab a prop. So here's a chair. I'm gonna imagine that my chair, that this chair is directly in front of my partner. So as I take my forward step with my left foot, they raise their hand. I'm now gonna walk around that chair. One, two, three, four, five, and I'm back to my partner on step number six. Does that make sense? All right, so let's do that again. So I do my box step. I go one, two, three, one, two, three. Second box. One, two, three. They raise their hand. I have six steps to get around this chair. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Now we finish the box step with a forward side together. All right? So the important thing to remember when you are doing this turn, it is that it is not a spin. That's what most people do wrong with this turn, is that they tend to treat it like they have to spin around. That's not what we're trying to do. We're actually trying to walk in a nice big circle so that, and this is kind of what I always feel, the leader's job is to show off the follower. If the leader does their job well, the follower ends up feeling like they're in the spotlight. That's absolutely what we want to have happen. So followers, as you do this turn, you get to show off, all right? This is a nice opportunity to take your free arm out to the side. If you're wearing a dress, you can hold out the skirt to the side a little bit. Uh, it's a really nice moment for the followers to feel like it's all about them just for that moment, all right? So let's do that again. Remember, second box step. As the followers step forward, that's when the six steps start. All right, here we go. And box step. A one, two, three, one, two, three. Second box. One, two, three. Here's my lead as I step forward. One, two, three, four, five, six. Back to my box step. This is the second half of my third box. One, two, three. Does that make sense? All right. So a couple of little things that will help on this underarm turn. It's very important, followers, that when the lead happens, that's on your forward step of that second box, it's very important that you step directly towards your partner. The big mistake that I see is that when the followers pick up that it's an underarm turn, they're so anxious to get around the turn that they start into the turn too soon, all right? So when you feel that lead as you're stepping forward on your left foot, don't immediately start into the turn because then you'll actually get through the turn too quickly. So instead, when the hand goes up, your first step is still towards your dance partner. Then you have step two, three, four, five, and six to make it all the way around. Trust me, that's plenty of time. And then you finish off the last half of your box, all right? So point number one, followers, step forward on step number one of the underarm turn. The second point is this. When the hand goes up for the lead, the left hand for the follower can sometimes be uh, a bit of a problem. A lot of times what I see is that when the lead happens, the follower forgets to let go of their left hand. And so they go into the turn and they get stuck. And then when they finally do think about the hand, they're kind of scrambling with their arm. They'll sometimes clip their partner with their elbow. It's just all sorts of unpleasantness. So my suggestion, as soon as you receive the lead for the turn, the hand that's on your partner's shoulder goes underneath the arm first. So it is actually the first part of your body that clears your partner, all right? So, let me show you what that all looks like. So I would go, one, two, three, here's my first box, second box. One, two, the lead happens. As soon as the arm goes up, my left arm 
goes through and underneath my arms. Two, three, four, five, six. My hand now comes back to their arm, and we do the second half of the third box. All right? If you find that getting that left arm through is awkward for you or uncomfortable or it's just too many things to think about, a secondary option would be as soon as you feel that bleed, the hand goes up, you can drop your left arm and even put it behind you as you go into that underarm turn. It's very much up to you. I tend to find that I like the arm going through more than I like the arm coming down but I've seen it both ways and both ways can look really nice. All right, so why don't we do this? Why don't we try the box up with an underarm turn with music and then we will um, we'll move on to our next pattern. All right, so here we go. Let's try box step with underarm turn with music. I'm gonna do it twice for each partner. Don't forget, we always do a box step first and then we do the turn on the second box. Here we go. It's a little country waltz. Let's give it a try first as the leader. Here we go. One, two, three, here we go. One, two, three. One, two, second box. Raise the hand. Meet your partners, second half of the third box. Nice, let's do it again. That's our first box. Here's the lead. One, two, three, four, five. Meet your partner. Second half of the box. Nice. Well done. Let's try that as the follower. Here we go. Followers. And one, two, three, one. Second box. Here's the underarm turn. Good. Let's try that again. Here's the first box, second box, and we're on turn. Back to your partner. Yeah, great job. Let me turn that off. Okay, now, something to keep in mind as well as I'm demonstrating these steps. Obviously, it's a little bit weird to uh, demonstrate this without having a partner to actually show you what the two uh, partners look like together. So we have recorded companion videos for each week of this month's class. So you can find those companion videos on Briora virtual.com. Uh, that's a, a brand new site that we've just launched in the last couple of months that has an incredible amount of content already on it. If you haven't already checked it out, the first two weeks of Briara Virtual are totally free. We just want you to kind of take a look at it and see what you think, see if it's got enough content on there for it to feel like it has value to you. We've got not only these classes that, that we do every single night of the week, uh, we also have syllabus videos, we've got technique videos, we've got lifestyle videos, we're gonna be launching all sorts of workout videos and little exercise things. There's gonna be just so much content on that we're very excited to continue to see what the uh, the website continues to turn into. So please check it out, again, Briora Virtual. Dot com and then if you click over to the classes link you'll find my class again on Mondays and then each week's class will have an associated companion video which I'd love for you to check out and that'll also give you an opportunity to see what this looks like when I actually dance this with a partner all right great let's move on to our next step the next step that we're going to talk about is called the progressive basic now when I was discussing the waltz originally uh, tonight, I talked about the fact that this is a traveling dance. It's a smooth dance, which means it moves around the room. So it doesn't just stay in one little spot. Those are what we call spot dances, right? Those are a lot of our Latin dances like rumba or cha-cha or swing or salsa. All of those dances tend to stay in one little area on the floor. But dances like waltz and tango and foxtrot and Viennese waltz and quick step, these are all dances that travel around the room, and so we call them smooth dances, all right? So uh, the progressive step is the first pattern in waltz that actually enables us to travel around the room, all right? So here's what this looks like. The progressive step 
starts with the first half of our box, just like what we just did. We do one, two, three. Now, instead of stepping backwards with my right foot, which is what I would normally do in a box, I'm going to take that right foot and I'm going to take it forward again. And forward, side, together. So essentially I've gone up, across, and together, up, across, and together. Does that kind of make sense? So it's like a little, a little a snake kind of moving up across the floor, or like a little ladder. All right, so let's do that again. So again, left foot forward for the leaders, side together. We close our feet. It's very important that we change our weight. Now right foot leaders, forward, side, and together. Leaders again, left foot forward, forward, side, together. Change your weight. Now right foot forward, forward, side, and together. Now, a couple of points about this progressive step. Every time I step forward, I want to remember what my beat is, right? Now, waltz goes one, two, three, one, two, three. So every third step, what beat am I on? That's right. It's a one. Now, remember what the rules were about heels and toes? I do heel leads when it's a one and it's a forward step. So every time as the leader, I do a one, I'm moving forward in this progressive step. So those should always be heel leads, all right? So it looks like this. Heel, toe, toe. Heel, toe, toe. Heel, toe, toe. And heel, toe, toe. All right? Does that make sense? So always remember, heel leads on the first step of each measure. The second thing that I really want you to remember, leaders, is to change your weight. The biggest things that leaders do wrong here is that they collect their feet and they forget to change their weight. So I like to think there's two ways that I kind of remember uh, which foot I'm supposed to use. The first thing is that I say it out loud not too loud because it might confuse my partner. So eventually you can say it in your head. I say left two, three, right two, three. So that I'm always remembering that after I say a three, I change to the other thing. Whether it was left last time, it's going to be right this time. All right. So I might say left two, three, now right two, three, now left two, three, now right two, three. All right. Now, if that doesn't really work for you, you can kind of imagine that the, your weight is like a, like a little ball of energy that's in the foot that's moving, all right? So every time you take a step, my weight is on my left foot. Now that ball goes to my right foot. Now the ball goes to my left foot, and when it touches my right foot, it transfers to the other foot. So now it's the right foot. Now it's the left foot. The right foot closes to the left foot. That ball transfers, and now it's in my left right left transfer that weight right left right transfer that weight however you remember just continue to practice changing weight the first few times you collect your feet your brain is not going to want to change the weight because it just used that leg so why can't it just use that leg again so this is probably the single hardest thing about dancing when you first begin is getting used to weight shifting from foot to foot. I distinctly remember really struggling with this when I was a brand new dancer. So very important that you got to get used to this sensation of weight shifting from foot to foot. All right, let's go through the followers part for the progressive. Followers, you're going to start with the first half of your box step. You're going to go backwards, side, and together. Now, just like the leaders, you're going to transfer your weight. Now it's the left foot backwards. Backwards, side, together. Now again, followers, backwards on the right. Back, side, together. Now again, I use my left. Back and side, together. So the real question here is, followers, at which point do you do a heel lead in the progressive step? Which step do you do a heel lead on? The answer is none of them, right? Because you're going backwards. So because you're going backwards, you never do a heel lead, right? If it was a forward step and it was a one, you do a heel lead. But since it's a backward step, even though it's a one, you still don't do a heel lead. Plus backwards heel leads are really hard anyway. So again, toes on every single step if you're the follower and you're moving backwards the entire time. All right? The last thing I want to say about the progressive is this. Even though I described this kind of like a little, 
a little jagged progression of movement. I always want to think that I'm slightly moving forward on the side step. So what I mean by that is that when I step forward with my left foot, if I'm a lever, as I step to the side, I don't want to go directly to the side or directly perpendicular to my left foot. I want to be slightly in front of the line that my left foot is on so that when I collect, I'm still moving slightly forward. It's not a lot. I'm not trying to do every step as forward. I just want to feel that my progression continues to take me down the floor. Same thing with my right footed forward step. Forward, my left foot doesn't go directly to the side. It goes side and slightly forward. So that then when I collect my feet, I'm continuing to progress down the floor. Does that make sense? And so of course followers for you, it would be the natural opposite of that. You would step backwards on your right foot, and instead of stepping directly to the side with your left foot, you would step side and slightly back, and then collect your feet. Backwards on the left, side, and slightly back, and collect your feet. You shouldn't usually, as the follower, have to think about this too much, because as the leader comes towards you, you'll feel their energy kind of take you a little bit more down the floor rather than directly to the side. Although I do know some leaders who like to make their sideways steps directly to the side. So if that's what the leader does, you just kind of roll with it. All right, let's try that to the music. Here we go. Progressive step with the music. And your daddy. All right, here we go. Leaders first. Leaders first. Here we go. And one, two, three, one, two. Again. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah? Let's do that one more time as the leader. Here we go. Leaders. Here we go. One, two, three, one, two. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's try it as the follower. One, two, here we go. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, one more time. Good job. Let's give ourselves some space and do it again. Here we go. One, two, three, one, two. Three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Excellent job. All right, well done. Two out of our three steps tonight. We're killing it. We're killing it. So let's go ahead and do our last step. So the last step tonight is called a simple twinkle. All right. Now, a lot of the steps that I do on week number one are designed to set us up for future patterns that we're going to do later on in the month. And this is definitely one of those steps. So the simple twinkle is a, um, a great pattern to use to set us up for other steps. It's also a great step to use to get us out of trouble on the floor. Because this is a progressive dance, which means that people are moving around the room, when there were <laughs> social dances and we could actually all get together and dance together, people would be on the floor, waltz is a very popular dance, and so people would get close to each other, and sometimes they'd kind of be in each other's way. So a twinkle is a great step to get out of the other person's way, all right? So here's what a simple twinkle looks like. A simple twinkle for the lever is a forward step a sideways step, and then as the left foot collects, it turns you a little bit. So now I'm looking to my left. Now, normally my right foot would be going backwards here, but instead it's going to go forward, forward, side, and together. So that is a simple twinkle. All right? Let's do that again. So again, leaders, left foot forward, right foot to the side. As the left foot closes to the right foot, I turn to my left. Now the rule is nose and toes turn, nothing else goes. Nose and toes, nothing else goes, right? So as I turn to the left, I turn my feet and my head. I don't turn my body. So I go one, two, three. So my body feels actually like it's turned slightly to the right but that puts me in what we call a promenade position. 
That promenade position, now we both step forward. I step with my right foot. Forward, we face our partners on two, three. So you'll notice that now I moved slightly to the left of where I was originally. So that's why it's a great sort of get out of trouble step that I like to use on the social dance. All right, let's do that again. Here we go, left foot leaders. A, one, two, turn to the left. One, two, three. One of the things that's a little bit tricky about this is that it is a promenade position similar to the promenade pattern in foxtrot and tango. In foxtrot and tango, I always start with my left foot in that promenade position as I go into my promenade pattern. In waltz, I don't. In waltz, I go with my right foot. So it's very important, leaders, that you continue to still do the weight shifting on three. So if you are saying to yourself, left two, three, right two, three, left two, three, right two, three, that doesn't change just because I've gone into a promenade position. All right, so here I am, closed position, left two, three. I'm now in promenade position, but it's still my right foot's turn to go, right two, three, and now I'm back to my left foot for a regular box step or regular progressive step. All right? Let's try that as the follower. Followers, you're going to step backwards on your right foot. You're going to step backwards, side, and as you collect your right leg to your left leg, you're going to turn your feet and your head to the right so that you are also in promenade position. Like we talked about with the leaders, nose and toes turn, nothing else turns, all right? So my upper body, my frame, my hips, that's all still turned towards my partner. Now I go with my left foot, one, two, three, facing my partner. I have a student who used to always like to say, it's the legs that are closest to each other in waltz that we go with, which is very true. So if I'm the leader, one, two, three, and I turn to that twinkle. My right leg is closest to my partner, so that's the leg I'm going to go with. If I'm the follower, I step back, side, together. It's my left leg, that's the one that's closest to my partner. One, two, three. But again, if you remember to shift weight consistently, this shouldn't be a, a huge difficulty. All right? Let's talk really quickly about heels and toes. Leaders. The first step of this step is the first half of your box. So it's a forward step and it's a one, thus it's a heel lead. Heel, side, together. Now I'm turned in promenade position. So even though I'm kind of going across the floor, the first step is actually a forward step and it's a one. So that means it's a heel and then side together. Followers, the first half of this is a regular box step. It's a backward step, so that means, of course, it's a toe, side, together. I turn to promenade position. I'm going to go with my left foot, but again, even though I'm moving across the floor, it's a forward step, and it's a one, so that makes it a heel and side together. So this is kind of a unique step because both of the, the partners, both the leader and the follower, both lead with their heels. All right. Now again, we haven't gotten into a lot of rise and fall, so I haven't kind of explained why heels and toes are really important. But if you've seen anybody waltz, there's this up and down sensation to waltz. It kind of has this ebb and flow, almost like waves at sea, right? So that's the sensation that we want to have in waltz. So if you've seen that and you want to put that into your dancing, by all means, feel free. I'll do more of that later on in the month as we go along. All right. Why don't we try the twinkle with music? Leaders first. We're going to do this two times. I'm going to do a box step and then a simple twinkle, a box step and then a simple twinkle. Here we go. One, two, three, one. Here's my twinkle. One, two, three, one, two box step. One, two, three. Here's the twinkle. 
Nice. Let's try that as the follower. Followers, again, one box tip, then a twinkle, one box, then a twinkle. Here we go. Box. Twinkle. Let these words be free. Box set. My peace of me. Twinkle. Let them burn away through this Excellent. Great job, everybody. Really well done. When the last days have come. And it's all set. Okay. So what did we accomplish today? Well, this is week number one of the vault. So I feel like we got a lot done today. So we did uh, a box step with an underarm turn. Uh, six steps for the follower. Remember, reach through as soon as you get the lead. Think about walking around the chair. And then leaders, you just keep your box step going as the follower is doing their turn. We also did a uh, progressive uh, uh, progressive basic, which starts to take our, our, our movement around the room instead of staying in one place, which Waltz generally does, uh, at least at first. And then we did the simple twinkle, which is a nice little get out of trouble step. And again, it sets us up for other patterns later on. All right, really great job for your first class tonight. I know it was a little bit more simple. Don't worry, you know my classes will definitely get more advanced as the week goes along. Make sure that you're looking at the companion video on Briora Virtual because that'll just really lock in the information. If you can work on this between now and next time, that'll make next week's class even easier. All right, so don't forget, we've now started a brand new month of classes. All of the other teachers have done their first week's class, except for me, this is my first week doing this uh, in the month of December. So if you need to catch up, you can always go onto the website and watch last week's class to make sure that you're up to speed with everybody's, uh, everybody's dance. One little announcement that I'd like to make is that on the 17th of December, that is next Thursday, we are gonna be hosting Charlotta Jorgensen. She's gonna be doing a musicality workshop exclusively to our Briora virtual members. So that's gonna be 7 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, on Briora Virtual. Again, Charlotta Jorgensen, she's a former world champion, an unbelievable coach, an incredible teacher. I've worked with her for years, and uh, she, we are really fortunate to have her uh, doing a, a live stream workshop for us again Thursday night, December 17th, 7 p.m. Pacific time. We'd absolutely love for you to join that. I think that's going to be a really enjoyable uh, enjoyable class. And again, it's designed for all levels. There'll be great information for, for you if you're pretty new and great information for you if you're a little bit further along in your dance journey as well. All right. Well, I hope everybody stays safe. Be healthy. Wear your mask. Stay inside. Uh, stay six feet away. All that jazz so that we can get through this as quickly as possible and get back to dancing with each other. Thanks so much for the opportunity to teach you tonight. I look forward to seeing you next Monday night. Thanks, everybody. Good night.